Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are back with a more conclusive performance analysis of the KO motor versus the stock motor. If you recall the last comparison video, Cole and I did some side-by-side -side drag racing which was quickly rained out after a handful of runs. Then I went on a 15 minute rant about the inconsistencies and faults in our testing. Though many were supportive of the initial testing, we did receive multiple comments including unrelated anecdotes and personal attacks against our age and choice of filming location, neither of which are relevant in regards to the results or the methodology of our testing. Aside from this being immature and unprofessional, it more importantly was completely unconstructive in regard to furthering the knowledge of the community. Aside from Cole and I being engineers in our mid-20s, our education, age, or filming location shouldn't be relevant and we prefer to be judged on our fairness and ability to provide accurate testing results. All that being said, much of our self-admitted lack of data lies in question around this plot. This plot is a comparison between the measured current going into the motor versus the RPM of the motor. This most simply put is a graph of theoretical acceleration. As we've discussed in the past, the amount of current you put into a motor is directly proportional to the amount of torque it outputs. The amount of torque it outputs at each RPM is what defines its acceleration. So what exactly are we trying to prove here? Well, our goal is to prove to you that during the test that you were about to see, we were putting an equal amount of current through both motors. By all measures, this should prove that if one outputs more power than the other at an equal input, then one generates torque more efficiently and also should accelerate quicker. This is not a comparison of controller types, this is not a comparison of different controller companies. This is strictly motor input power versus motor output acceleration. If we look at this graph closely, we can see at the top that we are first testing both motors at 60 volts, and we will also test at 72 volts. And for this test, it is pretty simple. Here are the parameters of the test. We tested both motors at 60 volts and 72 volts. We tested at 12,000 watts DC, and 450 phase amps. Now you may be asking yourself, why would you not run more power? The KO is ca uh, capable of running more power. We simply wanted to be able to control the bike on takeoff as best as possible. This would ensure that we wouldn't be trying to feather the throttle to keep the bike from looping out. We wanted to have maximum power the full time, and we wanted our acceleration runs to be consistent. We were also running 25% field weakening, and both bikes and the rider were identical. Same sprocket, same wheels, same tires, same tire pressure, same battery. Both 60 volt and 72 volt batteries were fully charged and the KO motor always went first. So uh, the 60 volt battery, when it was fully charged, it went into the KO first and without charging, it went into the stock motor bike next. Same goes for the 72 volt. For data collection, we used a Draghi. This is a highly regarded performance meter that accurately measures metrics such as zero to 60 times, quarter mile times, and it is accurate to within hundredths of a second. No question, this is far more accurate than any phone apps available or a standard GPS. Now, after our last video where the stock motor appeared to be faster than the KO motor, we wanted to give every possible advantage to the KO, hence why it got the fresh battery first, and also why we made sure that the phase current plot was equal, if not benefiting, the KO. Now at this point, you may be wondering what the test actually was that we conducted. We wanted to make this test as simple as possible. We found a 600 foot straight and level road where cars would not be driving and did acceleration testing. We did three runs on each of the four setups, and these were the data points we were collecting. Zero to 15 miles per hour, zero to 30 miles per hour, zero to 45 miles per hour, are 60 foot, 150 foot, and 300 foot times. All of this is data that the dra uh, Draghi directly outputs, and we averaged it all together. Here is what a Draghi results page looks like. You have your splits that you've decided on that we just went over and it reads bottom to top from quickest split to slowest. For these screenshots, you'll wanna be looking at the first six data points starting from the bottom as those were the only ones intentionally collected for the testing. Occasionally you'll see the 660 foot, uh, the 1320 foot, or even duplicate runs. Those are all irrelevant. You can also note that in the top left, you have your top speed, which doesn't matter a whole lot since I let off at various points between 
350 and 450 feet. Above that was the time of day that all of the data was collected. And throughout all the screenshots, you can see the full data collection period was around an hour and a half. Now you may ask yourself, why not do quarter mile times or top speeds? And the answers are fairly simple. One, we do not ride on the road at all. So we are looking for the best zero to 30 mile per hour performance, which most correlates with tight single track riding speeds. And two, nothing about our setup is safe for high speeds. We have huge off-road wheels and tires, larger than stock sprockets. And even if we did have road oriented gear, there are very few good places where we could safely hit these speeds repeatedly. And that's not to say that those metrics aren't important or are irrelevant to everyone. In fact, I think there are a lot of road riders who would like to see that. They will just need to be the ones who do those tests and collect that data and present it to the community. So getting into our first set of results here, these are all the draggy runs back to back. So we're gonna start with the 60 volt stock motor, then here we have the 60 volt KO motor and please feel free to pause as we're gonna breeze through these. Here is the 72 volt stock motor, a bit quicker on the top end as we've discussed in the past. And last but not least, we have the three runs from the 72 volt KO motor. If you'd like to independently look at all of these, that's fine, but we are going to be taking averages and comparing. But first, let's look at the 72 volt phase plot as well. You'll notice a bit sharper rise and overall a bit higher sustained phase current in comparison to the 60 volt graph. Now, they were tuned differently between the two voltages, which explains the different curve shape. But note that our goal was more to keep it similar between the motors rather than between the different voltages. So uh, generally speaking, this may explain any differences in acceleration on the top end between the two different voltages. Uh, and you'll also notice that both the phase current and DC current lines are very similar. We think it was quite fair. Um, and then for anyone curious, the vertical bars represent the amount of time that has passed. So this whole test um, on this plot was just over three seconds. All right, so the moment you've probably all been waiting for, we have our results section. Here are all the averages. Let's start up top with the 260 volt averages between the stock and KO motor. You can see that in all categories, the 150 foot and below are slightly faster with the stock motor. Again, this isn't meant to be a who can do it the fastest or a competition between different controller brands. This is simply power in versus power out using the testing equipment we could afford and easily source. A dyno is more accurate, but that isn't as real world as results that anyone can replicate. I would also like to mention that the zero to 45 mile per hour time at 60 volts for each motor is almost half a second different favoring the KO. This doesn't at all coincide with the results from the 72 volt test. And in fact, it was due to an extreme outlier. I'm not sure if the draggy glitched, but the first test on the 60 volt stock motor produced a zero to 45 mile per hour time almost half a second slower from the other runs. To contextualize how much of an outlier this is, the second biggest difference between runs on a certain category was nearly 20% lower. Though the stock motor appears to be slightly quicker, these times are fairly tight and aren't very noticeable in person, especially at higher speeds. That being said, the stock bike at low RPMs just feels notably torquier. And by all accounts, it was generally five to 15% quicker in the first three categories in comparison to the KO motor. I know I sound like a broken record constantly emphasizing the same critical points, but you'll also remember that we gave every advantage possible to the KO. It was tested with a more charged battery and had a larger area under the curve on both phase current plots, meaning it was getting slightly more current input through the RPM range. Something else I thought was interesting was that there was almost no discernible difference between 60 volt and 72 volt in terms of acceleration until you hit around 45 miles per hour, which makes sense as that's around the stated RPM rating of the motor at 60 volts. There is a lot of marketing nonsense about how 72 volt is always quicker and based on our testing, even with considerably more current input, that didn't seem to be the case until you hit the voltage specific RPM rating of the motor. Of course, if your goal is top speed, higher voltage always makes more sense. But in terms of off-road performance, we always go for the battery that has the best range per volume, weight and cost, which generally seems to favor the lower voltage batteries. 
Though this testing fails to cover critical areas like heat management, RPM limits, and other various factors that the KO is superior in, we tested the one thing I feel has the most marketing value. It was never stated directly by KO, but I think a lot of people generally assumed that by getting a new and expensive motor, they'd be able to generate torque more efficiently. And in our experience, that's not what has happened. The KO website does list a max torque of 55 newton meters, whereas the stock motor has a listed torque of 50 newton meters. Of course, we have no idea what other stats are behind those numbers, but the KO does have the higher listed torque than stock. We have no issues with KO as a company, and in fact, we've spent over $3,000 of our own money on their products, supporting their company so that we could test and provide information to the community, which makes the comments we received on the last test even more disappointing. We do think that KO makes a great product, and I would say as a whole, the KO motor is better than the stock motor. I think applications in which the KO motor is necessary are few and far between, and going even further, I'd say that the majority of riders would not see a benefit from upgrading, especially at the price. Those who would are people who constantly overheat the stock motor or those who want to run higher speeds without risking uh, throwing a magnet off the shaft. That represents an overall very small portion of the community and frankly, doesn't even include us. We've never had issues with overheating or limits regarding the RPM rating of the motor. Now that's not to discount others who have those issues, rider weight and riding style have the biggest effect. So that's where we're going to end this video. We look forward to summertime when we can actually test the thermal handling of the motor side by side on the trails against the stock motor. We also acknowledge that no test is perfect and encourage others to repeat this test, create new tests, then film and upload the results as we only stand to increase the understanding. We also have some KO controllers we are looking forward to testing. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. That's all for this one. Have a nice day.